Proudly it stands, a behemoth of compacted snow that renders it the largest in the street. Nobody knows who built it, but excited children clad in wintry essentials gather round to marvel at its magnificence. One boy circumspectly ventures forward to investigate, for the children are weary of its existence. There is something not quite right about him. Perhaps it's the way in which it leers, as if it can not only see the curious bystanders, but can feel them too. Maybe it's the clothes it wears. The hat belongs to Roger Wainwright, while the dress looks rather improper on anything other than Roger's wife, Trudy. Be careful, Stephen, someone in the crowd offers. The boy stops, knee-deep in snow, and takes a deep breath. A plume of white mist dances in front of his face as he exhales. He pushes on, ignoring the expectant mumbles of the gathering crowd behind him. Yet as he walks, he can only focus on the thing's eyes. In the joyous songs and festive films, little chunks of coal are used to create a snowman's eyes. Stephen is almost certain that the eyes staring down at him, a tenacious little boy who wants nothing more than to piss in his pants, yet can't because of his audience, are leftover Halloween decorations, for they are closer in appearance to real eyes than tiny pieces of coal. It's just a snowman, someone calls. Laughter ensues, and Stephen wants to turn to tell the crowd to go screw themselves. If it's just a snowman, why are they all cowering beyond the Wainwright's fence? Perhaps they are anticipating the elderly couple's appearance at the door, where they will admonish Stephen for trespassing before admiring their wondrous work of art from the comfort of their own doorstep. With a cursory glance towards the house, Stephen knows that the Wainwrights are not watching, unlike the snowman, who seems to be ushering him forward, closer, so that it might inflict upon him whatever devilish deed it has in mind. Stephen takes another step. The snow crunches beneath his boot. The crowd gasps. Someone facetiously screams, and the audience erupts with laughter, although it is nervous, the sort of giggling and chortling created for the sole purpose of easing tension. Stephen reaches the snowman and realises just how wide it is. The amount of effort that must have gone into building him is admirable. It is certainly not the work of two geriatric misers, which only confuses matters. Why has nobody claimed the snowman as their own? Stephen knows, without a shadow of a doubt, that if he had been its constructor, he would be shouting it from the rooftops. Everyone, come see what I made! But nobody is, and the snowman's origins remain a mystery. Stephen pats the snowman on its side and turns to face the sea of anticipating faces. It's amazing, he says. He can feel the icy cold snow penetrating his glove and removes his hand before it becomes sodden. I can't believe you were all afraid of a snowman. And now it's Stephen's turn to laugh. Some of the crowd surge forward to inspect the harmless creation. Others make their way home, disappointed that the thing didn't come to life, and eat the silly boy as he approached. And so the children play, scooping up handfuls of snow and launching them at one another. It's a beautiful day for a snowball fight, and the thaw is already beginning, reminding the children that tomorrow the snow might be gone. That night, rain arrives, peppering the white blanket with pinholes. The snowman casually shrinks, and by midnight, its pink innards are exposed. The eyes, which had stared out at the anxious crowd the previous day, slide down its front, leaving a crimson slug trail behind them. As if by magic, the snowman is replaced by the frozen shapes of two elderly people, limbs entwined as if in one final act of love. Trudy Wainwright's dress is stripped away and blown across the street where it drapes itself over a wicker, red-nosed reindeer. 
Roger's hat, with a remarkable stroke of luck, lands upon Roger's decaying head, completing his grotesque appearance. His eye sockets are empty, for his eyes are a foot in front, creating marvellous pink blossoms in the fading snow. As Christmases go, this is not the Wainwright's best, but it will be one for the rest of the neighbourhood to remember for a long, long time.